Chapter 6, Slave Camps In Even though my acquisition of a slave was unexpected, I felt that I had done a good deed. But enough patting myself on the back, I have things to do. Good. Well, since I've caused you so much trouble, I'll buy some clothes and other necessities for Kamsin. Rosalie laughed happily as she said that. Well, thank you. Then I will pick out some good things. Now, Kamsin. Come with me and I'll find one that fits. Oh, let's finalize the slave contract first. Rosalie moved swiftly to bring Cam Sin to his feet, and finally, she uttered and took Maya and Kamsin's hands at the same time. Immediately afterward, I felt a sensation as if something rushed through my body. Shortly after, my palm began to glow softly. The light gathered on the back of my hand and moved as if it were drawing some kind of character. Then an imprint of a feathered horse was created on the back of my hand. This. When I mutter this, Rosalie opened her mouth with pride. That's the mark of a slave contract. I'm a contract magician, you know. Ah, let's let the contract fee be free this time. Since this is your first visit to the store. Rosalie sounded like a professional. But the truth is, I didn't even plan to sign the contract. Well, I suppose it is fine. Thanks. I smile and thank her, and Rosalie makes a satisfied huff and bows grandly. Oh, I beg your pardon. Please, honored noble. I'll show you around. Finally remembering that I was the son of the Marquis, Rosalie suddenly began to show me around and with almost in a comically respectful manner, and I followed, laughing. This are the food and condiments. Over there are common commodities. We also have dishes and sundries. Oh, would you like to pick out some clothes for Kamsin first? Yes. Then this way, please. At the place I was led to, there were various types of clothing. From common clothes to those that look like folk costumes, there were even crude cut pieces of cloth with holes cut into the. They were likely for the slaves. Perhaps this is the usual attire for slaves? It is only one copper apiece. In contrast, if the sewing of the cloth is elaborate and the fabric is good, prices can range from one to five silver coins. At least, according to what Rosalie says. As far as groceries and other items are concerned, one copper coin would be about 1,000 yen. A silver coin is going to be about 10,000 yen. In other words, Kamsin would be 500,000 yen. Translator note. Kamsin is around 4,664 US dollars, at least in consideration of the current yen to USD conversion rate. I look at my options, weighing their prices and their values in my head. This section here is my favorite. If the young master is going to continue shopping around with Till, you will feel more comfortable dressed in these. When she said that and pointed to her clothes, Rosalie laughed jovially. Oh, yes, this one is made of particularly good fabric, and it costs a mere three silver coins. Rosalie tells me, glancing at Till. I signal her with my eyes, and Till confidently puffs out her ample chest. Leave it to me. Here's Master Van's money. I laughed as I received my money from Till, who offered it to me with a self-satisfied look on her face, and pulled out the coins I needed from inside. Now all we need is some underwear and maybe some shoes. Of course. In that case, I know some good shoes to go with your clothes. Thus, my first day out was a fun shopping spree of slaves and clothes and such. Completely unplanned. Um, Master Van. Deputy Commander D was looking for you, but... I offer him a cookie as Cam Sin, dressed in a suit like Black Butler's uniform, says so fearfully. Translator note, disclaimer, due to the nature of the Japanese language, sometimes gender pronouns can get mixed up. So Kamsin might be a male, but until decisively proven otherwise I will continue to translate them as female. Edit, future me here, Kamsin is a guy. So yeah. Please tell him I'm not here. Then Kamsin frowned with his clean and simple face. 
After washing his hair and body thoroughly, a skinny boy with dark blue hair appeared. I hated how surprisingly awe-inspiring the clothes looked upon their cleansed body. Translator note, fess up, are you a guy, or are you a girl? Edit, a guy. No, I think they probably know. Despite saying that, Camson accepted the cookie and ate it on the spot, then left the room. Oh, um, it looks like Master Van isn't here. Camson's voice faintly echoed from outside the room. My God! But there was a witness who says he just entered this room. I tried to look for him as well, but he was gone. H.M. Camson, why do you have crumbs on your mouth? There wasn't there before now. There are no crumbs. Those crumbs indicate that you just ate. To think your silence could be bought with a cookie. Van has some nerve to ignore the orders of the vice commander of the order. I'm Master Van's loyal slave, I won't rat him out. Dee snorted as Camson clearly declared that he was on my side, not letting Dee's pressure get the better of him. Mmm, you sure have guts to be able to talk back to me. All right, then I'll train you instead of Van Sama. You should treat it as an honor. Wah! Huh, uh, me? Sir? They had a very pleasant conversation, after which Cam Sin was taken away. It would seem that Cam Sin will also receive the special training from health that I received. Poor thing. I had no choice but to quietly follow them, even I felt a bit guilty. After that, when I saw Camson begin to become listless from fatigue, I decided to undergo the second half of the training by appearing in front of D on purpose. Well D, from now on let's make the first half of the training with Camson and the second half with me. It's just a pity that I can't shove off a spada's lesson onto Camson. And so, before I knew it, I had turned eight years old, translator note, that was, sudden. The prodigy, who had absorbed all of Espada and D's Spartan education until then, had become a loafer in the last two years. Now, the prodigy was just another child. At least, that's how it should have been evaluated. I was pleased to see that everything was going according to plan. But I didn't think that I would become so low-rated that I would be sent to a remote village. It worked a little too well. So how did it go? When I returned to my room, Till and Cam Sin, who were waiting for me, asked me that with an anxious look on their faces. I nodded to them with a smile. Yes. So you had an aptitude for fire magic. Till is pleased, but she stops celebrating when I shake my head from side to side to deny it. Then, this time, Cam Sin opens his mouth. So, then, the wind attribute? Just like Mercia Sama? They ask me that, but I shake my head at that too. I open my mouth quietly to the two silent girls. I had an aptitude for production magic. When he replied, they only blinked their eyes as they froze. After a few seconds of silence, Camson answers. Well, that's a magic one doesn't hear about often. Is it rare? Camson muttered. It's not rare, it's just that those with a magical aptitude for production don't publicly disclose it. Well, I guess it's an aptitude you don't see much of among the nobility. When I replied with a bitter smile, Till finally reactivated from her shocked state. Ah, but, with how amazing you are, you'll definitely be appointed to a key position in the Marquis family. There's no doubt about it. At that, a dry laugh comes out of my mouth. Well, since I've become a lord, I guess I am in a key position. What? Incredible. It really is a big role. As soon as I answered, Till literally jumped up and down in excitement. Camson smiled as well. But when I said my next words, their faces froze again. My territory is an unnamed frontier village.